looks like people are getting a little upset with Big Sills um, over on my Twitter page, at Dan Silio Show, because I would like the Eagles to fire Nick Sirianni on Tuesday of next week and um, hire Mike Vrabel. I don't care. By the way, I'm sick and tired of this guy, too, Quez Watkins. Queasy Watkins goes on, on his Instagram, I'll forever believe in myself. Dude, you don't belong in an NFL uniform. You are awful. You don't fight for anything. You, don't, you barely fight for your job. The only reason is because you're a track athlete. Other than that, you have horrible hands. You have horrible field awareness. Why you're on that team, I have no idea. You are not good. You are not good. And get this. Why in the world would the Philadelphia Eagles have guys like Kenny Gainwell and Queasy Watkins and target those guys at any time on a football field when you have A.J. Brown, Devontae Smith, and DeAndre Swift and Dallas Goddard? Why in the world would you want the ball in those guys' hands at any other time? Why in the world would you even think about putting the ball in their hands? I mean, hey, kid, it's good to believe in yourself, but – Believe in what? It you you're you're lying to yourself. You're not that good. He's not a good player. He is not worthy to be in an eagle uniform. He doesn't fight for anything. He was terrible in that Super Bowl. The Dallas Cowboy game last year showed you what he would fight for. Nothing. Man, that guy shares a wide receiver room. With Devontae Smith? Are you crazy? But this just goes to Javon Hardgrave. They must like soft people in the building. Javon Hardgrave says that the Eagles have a great kumbaya attitude. Kumbaya. Man. Now look here. I got to be careful here because I don't want to come off like old man on the lawn stuff. Do I think you can kick players' asses today and scream at them, pull their face mask, slap them in the helmet, grab them and tell them and swear at them, call them names, say, no, I do not. And nor do I think that that is something of a coaching style. But do you think Tony Dungy did that? Tony Dungy's a man of God. He's been on our program. You, you think Tony Dungy was swearing and grabbing guys by the face mask and yanking guys' helmets and all that? He wasn't doing any of that shit. You think Jimmy Johnson did any of that? I've never seen Jimmy Johnson put his hands on a player in my entire time around him, and I've known him 35 years. I've never seen that. You don't have to coach that way anymore. And players today don't want to be coached like that. And I get it. But you got to have some conviction in how you handle yourselves. Okay? Seals, what do you think about Rodgers? Do you think he chases UFOs? I don't care. Chase wins. That, hey, 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 Tyson. Here's my opinion on Aaron Rodgers. He could chase tooth fairies. As long as he wins MVPs and wins me a Super Bowl, he could chase the tooth fairy. I don't care. It has no bearing in my life about his attitude. That's for you to worry about what he thinks of and who he, his, his mannerism. And that's for you to be a uh, so-called pseudo-psychologist. And by the way, did you get a load of that interview this morning on WIP with one of the morning guys asking Nick Sirianni a question that said this, Hey, Nick, how are you holding up? How are you doing? I was like, that's a question a psychologist would ask a patient. Remember I told you that the other day? Talk show hosts sometimes think they're psychologists and psychiatrists. I don't give a shit how Nick feels. Coach the team. Get a win. Whether you feel good or not, 
You make $7 million a year. I don't give a shit how you feel. You think anybody cares how Jalen Hurts feels if he plays bad? No one cares. Hey, Nick, how are you feeling? That was the weakest question and the biggest pom-pom question I have ever heard in my life asked to a reigning NFL head coach. How are you feeling? Look, dude, I know you want to get in the building for them slurpy things or whatever it is. But do you have to walk around on your knees like that for the team just to stay in the good graces? Holy cow, is that embarrassing? Seriously, I had to turn it off because I was embarrassed for the guy. Asking a question, how are you holding up? Who cares? Who cares? It's Philly. <laughs> hey, how do you feel when you um, have, you know, you're not able to get to your mason job or your roofing job or your tile job? You all right? How you feeling? Why don't you take the day off? Well, I don't get paid then. That's all right. Man. <laughs> How are you feeling, Nick? Are you feeling all right? Is it okay? Oof. <laughs> it's really, it's really embarrassing. How's this taking a toll on you? That's not a question. I don't care. Nick, do you fear for your job? Here's the questions I ask. Hey, Nick, you worried about your job? You worried about the psyche of the team? Are you focused enough to win this game against Tampa Monday night? Do you think it was a mistake going to Desai or from Desai to Patricia? And do you think you'll go back? Those are questions you should be asked, not how are you feeling and how is this taking a toll on you? Those aren't questions. That's not a question. That's an enabling question. I've been doing this for 35 years. Never ask a question to a coach or to a player. How is this affecting you? You ask a guy, how is this affecting you during contract negotiations? But in a five game or a five or six game losing streak, asking how the coach feels is not something I'm on. Hold on. You got the toughest city in the country, and you have a guy asking you one of the softest questions in the history of sports broadcasting. That must have played well. I don't even know who he is, so I don't care, but I'm just saying. <sighs> now I know why more people come here each and every single day because you'll never get some shit like that asked how is this taking a toll on you I don't care people want to know what you're going to do how are you going to make it better what's the number one thing you have to do to your team to connect have you lost the locker room those are things people want to know, not how you're feeling. I mean, I mean, not another Philly fan, the liberal Philly media is not tough. Used to be. Angelo's killing it when he comes on our show. His, his hits are killing it. They're still killing it. Every week he kills it. I know why now. You know, you know what? People write on my Twitter page, this guy sucks. He's 
and he'll still get 35,000 views. He'll get 20,000 views on my Twitter clips that James puts up. They still go to him. 10% of you call him and say he sucks, and 90% listen to him. It's quite comical. The final regular season top 10 NFL teams. I don't have the Eagles on this list. At number 10, I have the Texans. I don't think you could beat the Texans. I think C.J. Stroud has had a spectacular year. And if he was a two-year veteran or three-year veteran, he'd get more love and more consideration for the MVP award. You know, I should probably put the Eagles nine or the Texans nine because here, do I believe in the Dolphins more than the Eagles? You know what? I'm gonna do. I'm. 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 I'm gonna make an asterisk here. I'm gonna. I'm gonna take that back. I'm gonna put the Texans at nine, and the Eagles at ten, because you know why. At least the Eagles beat them, and have beaten some good teams this year. And the Dolphins are a phony Rolex. So I'm gonna be fair here to this. I mean, you could say whatever you want about an 11-win football team, but I look at that 11-win football team and I go, Sills, what looks more fraudulent, the Eagles or the Dolphins? The Dolphins. The Dolphins are more fraudulent. The Eagles have beaten the Chiefs. The Eagles have beaten the Dolphins. They've beaten the Cowboys. They've beaten the Bills. They've beaten the Rams. They've beaten the Bucks. The Vikings... And Cousins were having a great year. You know, Cousins had like 20 touchdowns or something like that. Am I right when I say that before he got injured? Was he like 17 touchdowns or some psycho number like that? He had some crazy numbers. Uh, was it Cousins, Cousins having like some like career year when the Eagles beat him? Right? I mean, he had like 17 touchdowns, two picks or something. They were going to the playoffs. Before he got hurt, they were going to the playoffs. Maurice is going to join us at 4.30, or excuse me, 3.30. Yeah, so I'm going to dem this. And I'm going to put, I'm going to put the Eagles at 10. Because I think the Eagles are more real than the Dolphins. I'm taking the Dolphins off my top 10. 18 touchdowns, five picks. Was that like in five, or uh, like six games or something like that before he got injured? Dude, he was throwing the ball around the building. Um, I got the Chiefs at eight. I've got the Rams. At seven. You're going to be crazy when I say this, but I got the Packers at six. I think if I'm Dallas, you should be on high alert for that Packers team. Jordan Love in the last eight games has thrown 18 touchdowns and one pick. You might want to think a little harder about preparing for that game. I think the quarterback is playing better. I think the quarter, dude, he threw for 32 touchdowns. Jordan Love has had a better season than Matthew Stafford. Jordan Love has really come on over the last eight games. I don't think you're giving that guy enough love. Look at his touchdowns. He's thrown for 4,000 yards. I mean, the guy is, 
How about this? The first year starting versus Aaron Rodgers' first year starting? This kid's had a better first year starting than what Rodgers did. This guy can play. I got the Lions at five. I got the Cowboys at four. Imagine Sills and Seth attending a post-game loss. <laughs> They'd never call on us, Joshua. Just so you know, they'd never call on us. What if the Eagles woke up with that shock he sells? Would that shock you if the Eagles woke up? Kelsey Lane, Jalen. Devontae, AJ, Brandon, Fletcher. God, they're so really strong guys. I really admire those men. Those men are all fab. Jason Kelsey. Those men are really great superstar NFL legendary players. I've put great years in. You know what you love about it, too? Could they wake up? But here, here's the thing. Why should I give them the... Should you give them the benefit of the doubt? I'm not talking to coaches. Should you give the players the benefit of the doubt for the game Monday night? 10-year veteran, Brandon Graham. 10-year veteran, Fletcher Cox. 10-year veteran, Lane Johnson. 10-year veteran, Jason Kelsey. Man. I'm going to say... I would be shocked. I would be shocked. So let me pick this up. I got Eagles 10, Texans 9, Chiefs 8, Rams 7, Packers 6, Lions 5. I've got the Cowboys 4. I've got the Bills 3. I've got the 49ers 2. And I've got the Ravens 1. So the way I have it shaping up going into the playoffs, Ravens and Bills for the AFC Championship, Cowboys and Niners in Santa Clara for the NFC Championship. Um, I don't believe the Lions are ready. I think the Eagles are on flames. I think the Chiefs are out of gas. I think the Rams don't have enough to win consecutive games. And I think the Texans are just too young to know how good they are. Same with the Packers. Packers could upset the Cowboys, though. And could that open the door for the Eagles? If the Packers upset, if the Packers upset the Cowboys, does that give them does that give them a road for them? But they that, that means that the, the way it's play, the way it's shaping out now, the playoffs would go this way. If Green Bay upsets them and Detroit beats the Rams and Philly. Green Bay would play San Francisco. And Dallas would play Philly, am I right? That sound right? It would go San Francisco. If Green Bay beats Dallas, Green Bay would play San Francisco in the divisional round. Detroit holds serve. Philly is the wild card. They would play the two seed. It'd be Dallas and Philly.
in Dallas. My first question to um, to uh, Merrill Reese will be the question that was asked to him today. And I'll, I'm going to phrase it. I go, you know, Merrill, I heard you on IP today, and I heard you say that you haven't felt this way since the year Doug was fired. Could you expand on that? Man, have you ever seen something I'm trying to. Do you guys remember that that Steeler team a couple of years ago that started 11 and 0 and had a nuclear meltdown? They were like 11 and 0 under Tomlin, and then they limp home with like six losses, and they had something like that. And Tomlin said that we were rotten from within. It was something, and I'm paraphrasing that. Um, I guess sometimes, man, when you when you listen. Sometimes the littlest thing can send your organization and your football team. Was there one thing player-wise that you remember in these last six games that make I, – I heard Dallas Goddard make a comment once we clinched the playoff spot. We throttled down. I'm not sure I believe that. That doesn't look like an organization that throttles down. If Philly does win, they have one less day of rest. They'll play Saturday, probably, you think? Probably so. They'll probably play on Saturday. The Goddard comment coincides with Hardgrave's comment. Hardgrave calling the organization, and I'm blanketing it, soft or kumbaya. Hey, once we once we got the once once we got the playoff spot. Once we got the playoff spot, we rolled back and we decided to throttle back. That's coaching. You got the wrong jockey. Jesus criminy. This is more of a direction disaster than I thought. You got guys saying comments that are all over the place. Javon Hardgrave, you're soft. Um, Hassan Reddick's comments last week. Hey, play what's called. You're like, hey, we throttled down after we won a playoff spot. Where's the internal leadership? Where's Jalen Hurts in this? I just, it's becoming sad. I, I mean, I'm not, like I said, I'm not sure what else to say. We haven't talked football in three weeks here about the upcoming opponent. And we're outsiders and they're inside not talking football. Eagles preparing for the 49ers on five days. Good luck. Think about this. We're on the outside. Talking about the internal issues they have going on inside. And so are the players.
if you think Hurts is the problem anyway, then if you think Hurts is the problem anyway, then you're a clown. $50 million doesn't mean you're a scapegoat. Hurts earned his money. No, he didn't. Hurts has not earned his money. You earn your money and you validate your contract when you win a Super Bowl. That includes everybody who's a $50 million guy. You haven't validated anything. Dak Prescott is being evaluated. Josh Allen, Joe Burrow, all of them. There's only one guy. Stop using the word elite. You're elite and you validate your contract when you deliver the Lombardi trophy. That's when you have validated your contract. Until then, rest of it's noise. It's noise. 17 games and three different dichotomy years from Jalen Hurts does not validate anything. Do you see potential stardom in the kid? Yes. Do you like his makeup? Yes. Do you like him as the face of your franchise? Absolutely. Do you like his hard work and tangibles? Damn sure. That doesn't get you 50 million, though. Dude, that's a front running football team. You guys can't dig your way out of trouble. You haven't shown it yet. Show me you can dig your way. Hey, do you know if you beat the Bucks Monday? Do you know what that's going to tell me? I don't know if you guys agree with me. Hey, you dug your way out of some shit. But get this. You know what you're going to say on Monday if you win? See, Sills, I told you they'd get it right. Hey, congratulations for doing your job and beating the Bucks. You're going to want to have kudos and lowering your expectations to beating the Bucks. How far the mighty have fallen. Beating the Bucks.